Welcome to the subject of the day, the subject du jour, seaweed. Yes, I have a bottle of Kelp Max in front of me, but Kelp Max is more of a brand name. It is a seaweed extract, and that is what we're going to talk about today. Well, why I always talk about my seaweed solution, be it my welcome cocktail for new arrivals or for recovery, why I say seaweed plus CalMag, but that is for another video. Today, we're just focusing on seaweed, I got an email and I was asked to approach and address the issue because thank you Paige very very much. You're saying that you're doing as per what I say on the videos and I hope that it's working for you. But why? Why do we do what we do? And I hope that this video will help in understanding the properties and the fantastic results that seaweed has in the growth and development of our orchids. So let's dive in. I'm going to make this quite vanilla. I'm not a scientist, I'm not a biologist, but there's a certain logic and I'm going to just really, really tone this down and hope that it is easy, understandable without throwing all kinds of words and names at you. But there are three that I find very important to understand why seaweed extract, and again, forget the brand name Kelp Max, seaweed extract in liquid form, no matter what the brand, if it says seaweed extract on it, that is what I'm talking about. Meanwhile, if you're interested in this product that I use, I have the links to the Amazon down below in my description for the US and for Europe. So if you're interested to use the same product. But let's dive in. It'd be interesting to see your comments afterwards. I appreciate it if you would leave me comments and say, would you elaborate more on XYZ? I'm all for it. So basically seaweed is a tonic for all plants, not just orchids and at all stages of growth, stimulating root growth, aiding chlorophyll production, invigorating cuttings and bare root starts. So this is not exclusive to orchids. It delivers amongst many, many other things, nitrogen, potash, phosphorus in small amounts and contains a wide spectrum of trace elements in a form that plants can use in addition to plant hormones and amino acids. So this is quite the concoction. But the interesting part for me regarding seaweed, it is a tonic, it is not a fertilizer, even though it has minute elements of the nitrogen, potash, and phosphorus, okay? So consider this a supplement. This is not your one and only go-to fertilizer because of the hormones. The thing is with seaweed extract is that they have high levels of natural plant hormones especially auxins, cytokinins, and gibberellins. Just to put it out there, hormones being very small signal molecules that help steer the growth and development of the plant, and they are usually produced in one part of the plant to initiate physiological changes. These hormones occur naturally in all plants, not just orchids. Let's talk about the auxins. They are quite important. They are produced in the leaves and then transferred to the roots and growing tips. It is the auxin hormone that is known for the positive effects on rooting. And synthetic auxins are main components in rooting powders and cloning gels. The thing is that only a small amount of auxins are needed to initiate root growth. Too much of the hormone, especially when applied to growing roots, can actually have the opposite effect and restrict root growth. So I don't want to put that out there with a plan of going, oh my goodness, I don't know how to handle this stuff. I'll, I'll get to all that. So, but I just wanted to make sure that in orchids, less is more. I'll elaborate afterwards. So the extracts contain small amount of natural auxins that help stimulate rooting, which when combined with cytokinin result in production of greater root mass. We know what more roots means for our orchids. Greater root mass provides better uptake of water and nutrients, resulting in a stress-resistant, healthier orchid, and that's what we want. So I just mentioned another hormone, the second one, cytokinins, and seaweed extracts are particularly rich in cytokinins. This hormone stimulates rapid cell division and the production of new cell walls, so cytokinins are very important for new growths. They work together with other hormones for various phases of the orchid cycle. If, for example, they are applied during root formation, the cytokinins will stimulate the division of more root cells. 
If they are applied during the growth stage, the growths will grow faster with stronger cell walls. Now there's a third one, an important one as well, but the first two, the auxins and the cytokinins, are the two main components what makes seaweed extract so important as a supplement for the orchids. It's the gibberellins, best known for stem elongation and flowering or flower development and slowing down the leaf or pseudobulb deterioration, meaning gibberellins could be perceived as a youth elixir upholding for a long period of time the back end structures, the older parts of the orchid, which also then maintains a little bit more storage organs for our orchids, ergo making them stronger. The thing I have to though say is when using seaweed extracts, it is always important to follow the manufacturer's dosage. That is the case for many products, but when it comes to orchids, I would actually go a little bit less than anything that a manufacturer recommends. I would even have that to be on the safe side. With orchids, as usual, the old adage is less is more. Their metabolism is much slower than regular plants. If you were to go along the route of applying more seaweed extract to speed up recovery or break dormancy, usually that will have an adverse effect. Adverse effect meaning you're bringing an orchid out of season, you're adding too much of one, not balancing it with the other. It could give very strange looking flower spikes. The blooms could look deformed. The growths could look deformed all these factors. So when I say less is more because of the slow metabolism of our orchids, it's best to err on the side of caution when supplementing with seaweed extract because we are just adding a little bit more of a boost of the hormones that the orchid already has and would do on its own. It would trigger its auxins. It would trigger its cytokinins. So we are just giving it a little bit of a help, a boost. We're not there to override the production. And for that reason, I recommend using parts per million as a measure. And here's why. Maybe one day you choose to change your brand. The dosage recommendation will change then as well. And then you might be unsure if half is good or too little. Measuring how much seaweed extract you apply to your orchids using the parts per million value will ensure the steady application no matter the brand. Personally, since using seaweed extract, I have found that 40 parts per million is a great margin for rescues, for seedlings, for mature orchids, also the fully grown large ones. In my opinion, the size of the orchid does not equate to more seaweed extract for that specific orchid. The hormones will do their job anyway. And when it comes to applying seaweed extract, the size of the orchid does not matter. So I use seaweed extract in my watering at least once a month, depending on what the orchids are doing on an individual basis. When my orchid is in dormancy, for example, or going into dormancy, I do not apply seaweed extract because the hormones the climate, the day length, is telling the orchid it's time to slow down. Remember that seaweed supplements are an activation supplement. So when an orchid goes into dormancy, same as when an orchid is in rest phase, do not add seaweed because the hormones within the orchid is triggering what it is doing and we are not there to override that. But then turn it around and say when you see a nubbin swelling at the base of the orchid, that means auxins are being pumped through the orchid to activate a new growth point. That is a good time to start with seaweed. Normally, well, in my case, I don't see what's going on inside the pot because my pots are not clear. If you were to see no nubbins at the base of your orchid, but you see root tips starting in your pot, if you're growing with clear pots, that is also a good time to start applying seaweed extract to your waterings. And I go back to saying about the parts per million measurement, because if you change brand, the dosages, the concentration, every brand is different. So I recommend 40 parts per million at least every month. And if the orchid is busy with several leads, several growing points every second week, because that means there's more auxins needed, there's more cytokinins needed, 
and we can push that and help that by applying every two weeks an additional little supplementation of seaweed extract. Multiple leads every two weeks, single lead orchid, seedling rescue once a month. This also applies to if you have a very large orchid, very tall, perparatas, bauringianas, guariantes. If it only has one lead of growth, the size again does not matter as to how much seaweed you're applying. It only has one lead of growth. If it has multiple leads of growth, every two weeks. So that is what I mean about the size of the orchid. It's not what it's occupying in the pot. It is what is the orchid doing at its base, growing, roots, etc. Multiple leads every two weeks, single lead once a month. I would not go beyond two times per month. If you have rescue orchids, it might be a nice thing to give them a soak of 40 parts per million once a week. But as soon as you see that the orchid is recovering, that you can see some gloss and shine in the leaves, stop and then just go with your regular water, whether you use tap, RO, well or rainwater, and then back off on the seaweed and then just apply once a month. Again, this is for recovery and rescues. The minute that you can see leaves getting a little bit more of a shine, looking healthier, the pseudobulbs aren't as shriveled, back off on the seaweed. You have done your job, the orchid is recovering, let the roots grow. You do not want to stunt any roots that are coming new because of your seaweed extract application. And now you're putting in more seaweed on top of that and it will stop the root production. Right, let's talk about pH. If you're growing bare root or in inorganic media, drop the pH of your water to 6.3. If you're growing in organic media, get the water pH to 6.5. The reason being, there are some nutrients in a seaweed extract that will be absorbed only at the right pH. They are minute, but they are there. And to reap the best benefits of what you're applying to your orchid, inorganic and bare root, 6.3 pH, and they will be able to absorb those nutrients that are also in the extract. It won't lock them out. 6.5 pH if your media is organic, because being organic, the minute you put water in there, the media itself will drop the pH down to an acceptable level of 6.3, 6.2, by which time those nutrients in the seaweed extract are available to be absorbed by the roots. You can see that it's a black sticky substance. Very dark. And it smells of the sea. It's not a nasty odor. There should be no nasty odor with seaweed. This is not a dosage that I would recommend. I'm just showing you the product. Shake it well before use, and then put it into your water. Using 40 parts per million, no matter how much water you are preparing, take your TDS meter to measure your 40 parts per million. This will guarantee that you always have the same dosage, no matter your brand. So basically, seaweed extract is not your fertilizer. It is a hormonal supplement that should not be abused. It is there to help the orchid and not override it. The orchid has all the hormones I mentioned today in its own structures, triggering what the orchid is doing at what time of year and for how long and how well. Supplementing with seaweed extract just gives that orchid a little bit of a push. The key word being, it's a supplement, it is not a fertilizer. So I'm hoping that I didn't sound too much like a lecturer, but I wanted to make sure that the thoughts that were in my head come through verbally, that makes sense. <laughs> it's not as easy sometimes to be able to say why you do what you do. I just really hope that this was easy to listen to, it made sense, and it wasn't confusing in any way. That was the plan of this video. Let me know, please, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll be super, super happy to elaborate. Meanwhile, one last tip, store your seaweed extract in a refrigerator. Keep it cold. 
The only reason mine is outside right now, it's because it looks prettier next to the Pro Catavola Golden Peacock as opposed to me opening my fridge door and talking to you with it in the viewfinder. <laughs> Keep it in the fridge. It is an organic product. It will last much, much longer. And because you're not using it as often and you're using it in tiny, tiny amounts, it will last a lot longer in your refrigerator and not go over. If when you open your bottle of seaweed extract, and it smells like fish or has a very pungent smell, it's off, do not use it, throw it away. And most seaweed extracts will come in black bottles or white, but not clear bottles. Do not allow too much light on the product. If it's a clear bottle brand, do not buy it because that'll go over so much quicker as well. We don't know how long it's been in the storage. We don't know when it was exactly harvested. How long has it been on the shelf? how much light exposure has it had, and all those factors make a difference with regards to the quality of your seaweed extract. So, black bottles or white, but no clear see-through bottles. Thank you so very, very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.